There's something strange going on with smartphone cameras at the moment and we need to talk about it. Remember how you always used to be able to tell that a photo was taken on a phone? It looks like this, crushed shadows, way blown out highlights and a distinct softness with digital noise that ruined otherwise good images. Contrast that to today and you can easily tell when a photo is taken on a phone but in a different way, at least in auto mode, because there's a distinct flatness, almost the opposite to before. Shadows are way lifted, highlights are way down with the HDR processing and a lot of the tone and character has been pulled out of the image. These aren't bad images but they are obvious for a different set of reasons. The thing is that proper big cameras like DSLRs don't work like that and that's why you can tell when a photo has been taken with a smartphone. But here's a photo captured on an interesting phone we seldom see here in the west and it has a feature that Samsung, Apple and Google have stubbornly avoided. We've made major progress in the smartphone photography field over the last 10 years but we've sort of hit a split in the road and I don't think that really needs to be there so let me explain. Most flagship smartphone camera sensors have grown to sit at just below the 1 inch corner to corner point or around 1 over 1.3 or 1 over 1.4 inches. That's a big sensor but it's also not far off what we had in the Lumia 1020 way back when or the Huawei P30 Pro. No, these days the likes of Samsung, Apple and Google take those fairly stout camera sensors and combine them with aggressive processing to combat the limitations brought on by relatively small sensors compared to what you might find in a Sony A7S for example. And for the most part, this works. There's a reason why people love Pixels and iPhones cameras every year. But often what you miss out on by going with this approach is the natural shallow depth of field that a dedicated camera will give you and generally, tonally, these images can come out a little flat or with so much HDR that it doesn't really feel natural to look at. This is more of a problem with the upper mid-range and flagship killer options but it's also a characteristic that you might find in flagship photos every now and then. If it's not done really well, it can look off. So how do you solve this whole obvious smartphone look? Well, for a while, these phones have had raw capture options that many talented photographers have taken advantage with, with lots of tasteful tuning that is then done after the fact in apps like Lightroom. But this isn't a solution for everyone as it requires not only the additional time, but also quite a bit of skill. And it kind of goes against what a smartphone camera is really meant to be, which is convenient, point and click, bosh, done. The second option is what Apple has done in its photographic styles by giving you the option to make your own profiles that look more contrasty with less dynamic range, ironically, to look more like what a real camera might take. There are options like the Halliday camera app, which some iPhone photographers have used to get more of a film-like look. Having this option baked into the camera app is really solid, but it doesn't account for one pretty big thing. Here's a photo taken with the now slightly outdated Oppo Find X6 Pro. The model doesn't necessarily matter. What does is the fact that it's using a one inch sensor. Actually, it's a one inch type sensor, which isn't exactly the same thing, but it's pretty much the same. What this does is instantly give you the shallow depth of field and natural bokeh that doesn't require a hit or miss portrait mode. And this is very much noticeable to your average person. It also looks far more natural with less aggressive HDR, thanks not only to the bigger sensor as it doesn't need as much processing, but IMO, the Hasselblad endorsed color tuning, keeps things looking less artificial. These bigger sensors are more capable in low light since the photo sites can be bigger and capture more information, and almost all characteristics of an image, detail, dynamic range, color information, are generally improved by having a larger sensor. So why have all the big dogs in the West been sort of avoiding them? Why have they been reserved for Eastern smartphones? Well, they can cost more than the sorts of sensors that we're used to seeing in our smartphones, which isn't enticing from a business perspective. That's a, an obvious one. But what I think is the main issue is space. These bigger sensors require bigger lenses and usually a longer flange distance from the sensor to the glass elements. This makes them pretty generally massive and so that's what you'll see with these things. Ginormous camera bumps, which if my comment section is anything to go by when I review a, an Honor or a OnePlus, no one's going to buy that. That's a massive turn off for a lot of people. 
This Oppo Find X6 Pro's camera bump dwarfs even what people think is a huge housing on my OnePlus, especially in the depth. And most of the people I've shown this smartphone to have said that having half the back be taken up by a camera setup is not the sort of thing they want on their smartphone, regardless of how good that camera system really is. I don't know about you, but I think a great solution to this problem would just be to sort of fill out the rest of the chassis so that the camera bump is completely flush. There is no bump whatsoever. Completely flush cameras can look and feel great because they don't catch on anything and the extra space afforded by this huge increase in volume would mean maybe we could put seven or 8,000 milliamp hour batteries in these things. Week long battery life anyone? Like that would be incredible, bit of a double whammy. But again, I think it's that people wouldn't necessarily buy one of these, which is a real shame. I know us enthusiasts would probably love that kind of concept, but we make up a very small portion of the overall smartphone buyers. But you can't really bend physics. These bumps do need to be bigger to incorporate the bigger and more complex camera structures, but maybe they don't need to be as wide as a dinner plate on the back of this Oppo. So what now? Well, I like what Apple is doing with its photographic styles. I like what BBK is doing with the Hasselblad endorsed colors. And I think that combining those with a big one inch sensor could generally be the ultimate solution going forward, or even just giving people the option to tune their default camera look in a little setting that's stuffed up in the top corner of the screen so that those who care can, and those who don't will never need to select anything. You might have noticed some phone makers have backed off slightly with the HDR processing, which I think greatly helps a photo to look more natural, and that's fantastic, but I would seriously love to see a, an iPhone, a Pixel a Galaxy, with a one inch camera sensor. Just imagine the possibilities of a camera system like that. Genuinely, that is exciting. My prediction is that we might not see one inch camera sensors in smartphones popularized over here, for some time, or at least until they can package them into a more palatable setup. I imagine AI processing will be the trend for at least a while longer, yay. It feels like we potentially hit the limit of what these sub one inch sensors are capable of, or perhaps that we've spent so many years trying to make an objectively good camera that we've forgotten that photography often isn't about objectivity at all. It's about capturing moments and memories. Maybe there's a middle ground somewhere, but one thing's for sure, it's going to be seriously interesting if and when we see one inch sensors popularized here in the West. What do you make of the whole situation, guys? Are you big into smartphone photography at all? Uh, these things are ridiculously powerful these days and getting truly excellent images from your phone is easier now than it really ever has been. Do you care about one inch sensors at all? Uh, the, featured in the sort of Sony, Xiaomi, Oppo, Vivo smartphones as of late? Or do you think that we just need to sort out the processing and stick with what we have? Uh, let me know in the comments. I'm intrigued to hear this one. As you guys know, I love cameras, so this is really exciting for me. Uh, and while you're down there in the comments, be sure to hit like if you enjoyed today's content and subscribe to never miss another upload. I've been Ryan Thomas, and I will catch you later. Cheers.